right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Scott Halford, who is in Denver, Colorado. Scott, correct? Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay. Excellent. And Scott's a Hall of Fame speaker, award-winning author on emotional intelligence, intelligence, critical thinking, neural leadership, and influence. And today we're going to talk about the whole idea of both emotional intelligence and neuroscience or neural leadership. Um, and Scott, you know, we've been through this strange, or we're still going through this strange pandemic. And even before the pandemic, I think people were starting to crave a little bit more authenticity, a bit more connection with the people, like who, whether it's in sales or other parts of business. But because we'd gone too far in the other direction, I think being kind of hands off and very, you know, putting up technology barriers instead of using technology to enable greater connections. So as we start to come out of this, what role do you think more, you know, even more critical role do you think emotional intelligence will play? You know, I, I don't think it could be any more underlined than the idea that, that if you're going to interact with another human being, you need to understand kind of the nuances of what they're communicating to you at any given time. And in sales, nothing could be more, um, more important as a tool because when you're sitting across from someone and they're giving you cues that they don't even know that they're giving to you, but they indeed are giving you cues and you're not picking them up, uh, you're not going to be as successful as the one who is picking them up. And now you throw in Zoom or you throw in you know, WebEx or any other kind of, of software like this, like we are on right now, you cut out a whole set of mirror neurons that allow you to read someone. So we just cut down the ability so that if you didn't have emotional intelligence before and you don't have it now, then you're going to be even more at a loss interacting with your clients because you're not going to be able to read them as well. And then once you make it to the phone, all bets are off. So it's, it's incredibly important. It's just one of those things that says, this is how we separate ourselves from the animals and make ourselves human. And people love other humans, believe it or not, we actually do. <laughs> it's hard to tell sometimes, but yeah, um, yeah fundamentally. <laughs> um, so but maybe for the, for, just for our audience, maybe uh, give a bit of a definition of emotional intelligence, because I think a lot of people think they know what it means and think they, they have it. And I'm not sure they always know exactly what it means. And I'm not sure they always recognize if they have it or not. Oh, exactly. I think, a lot of people don't know what it is. And, and some people would describe emotional intelligence as good old common sense, right? Mm -hmm. But what is common sense? You know, <laughs> like what, what is sensible and, 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 and right to you might not be sensible to me. Uh, but it, there really is something to common sense, and it is the sense of the comments. What, what society has basically said, this fits into the norm of, of how you behave. Um, it's, it's wisdom, and it's, it's kind of um, street smarts. It's different than IQ, which is what we use in order to create evaluations, to reason, to invent, all of the things that allow us to add things up. That's IQ. But that's only responsible for about 6% of workplace success. When you add EI or EQ, you know, that's basically the same thing. When you add that on, it allows you to see the difference between really smart people, and we've all seen those really smart people who are jerks, and the people who are more moderately smart but have emotional intelligence, they're more successful. And it's been proven mm -hmm. over and over again. So it's really the, 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 the set of attributes that allow you during crisis or when things are falling apart to behave in a way that allows solutions to come, to reason to come. A real quick example. Um, last night, a, a friend of mine who was moving, he said, it's really hard to tell the difference between the good movers, you know, the, the van lines and, and the bad ones because they're all so bad. And how do you tell the difference? Because all of their reviews are so bad. I said, go to the reviews and see how they respond to the reviews because the response to the views, reviews tells you more about the, the, the basic, um, their, their, their integrity, their, who they are and how they're handling you in service when they blame and say, well, if you would have had this or you would have had that, we would have been able to do this yeah. versus the ones who say, this is not how we do business. This is what we're going to do. And this is what we will do for you in place of that. That tells you a lot about their emotional intelligence because it's the response, 
in crisis and difficult times that really sets us apart. It's, again, in, in sales, it's going to really make a difference in how you interact. You're not paid for when things go right. You're paid for when things fall apart and for you to put them back together again and move forward. Yeah. Yeah. No, no I, I, I love that. And I also think that, you know, we live in this strange world um, where I say ad nauseum, you know, people say, oh, I'm busier than I've ever been. And I always, my retort is always, are you though, or are you more distracted than you've ever been? And I think if you are going to be, if you're going to be emotionally intelligent, you need a certain level of awareness and you need to be present when you are having conversations or interacting with other human beings. And that's something that you'll find is noticeably absent in a lot of people now because they're so distracted. Like they, they can see there's a message on their phone and they're, they're looking at you, but you know they really, really want to grab that message. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, and, and people feel that. They feel that if you're on the yeah. phone with me and I, I can't see you, I can feel when you are looking at something else and doing mm -hmm. this and you're like, ah, my, my business partner, would, she was able to tell that on a, on a regular basis. The, the thing that, that is, is easy and difficult about all of this is it means you have to put yourself down for a moment, not down, you know, put yourself yeah. down, but you have to put yourself to the side for a moment and be so incredibly present that you're able to, to see the shifts and nuances in, in relationships you've had in the past and be able to read and perceive and predict the nuances for people you've just met. That is the thing that's going to make you just fail as a human being. Plus, then people want to do business with you because they feel, they feel honored and they feel bigger in your presence. Mm. And it's interesting if you've ever seen that experience at all where maybe uh, a salesperson does a, a sales call and there's somebody else either listens in as an observer or whatever from your side. And then later on when they both recount the call, it's like two different calls. And, yep. and the salesperson <laughs> may have missed a lot of those nuances and cues because they were caught up in their own stuff. It's absolutely right. I mean, if you look at um, therapists, good therapists won't write while you're talking. You know, they mm. always show them on TV, aren't they? And, yeah. and nothing could be more violating to your psyche and, and in your ability to um, think that they're actually listening than for them to go, no, really, I'm listening. Because we know innately that we cannot multitask. We actually cannot do it. And for all of you listeners out there thinking that you're awesome at it, you, would, you want to stop claiming that because that, now that there's evidence that it actually atrophies your gray matter and it contributes to Alzheimer's, and other dementia. So uh, paying attention is difficult to do. And it, we all know that innately. And so when you do it, it is a gift. And it's something that's rewarded with their attention back. And that's what sales is all about, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love that. It's funny you mentioned, you know, therapy, because I, I also bring this up on, a, um, on, on many occasions is in, in, in group or family therapy or couple therapy or whatever, they have this technique where you know, say if you were speaking, um, Scott, uh, and you're speaking to to me, uh, I have to listen to you and then I have to repeat back what you said, but not just repeat back. I have to keep going until you tell me that I have totally understood what you said. And, yeah. and I just think that people should often think about that as an exercise, especially when you're setting somebody is like validate what they said really, and make sure what they, what you think they said is what they actually said. And, then, and the first time that you do that and you actually stop yourself and you try to repeat it back, it is staggering and startling to discover how bad we actually are at it to go, wait, no, wait, what did you just say? And, yeah. and to actually not just repeat the words, but get the mm -hmm. intent and the nuance. Yes. That's why text doesn't matter. And email or uh, text and e uh, uh, emails don't aren't effective because you can't translate intent and you can't translate emotion in it. And emotion, you know, emotions are going to be with you 24 hours a day, every day of your life until you are dead. When somebody says, "I did this without emotion," it's like, "Did you die for a moment?" Because you will, you couldn't, just, you couldn't decide what color socks to put on this morning without emotion. Emotions just yeah. wait. It tells you how important things are. Is it going to be significant to your life or not? And that's what emotions do. And they can range from anger to fear to sorrow and, and all of the, the nomenclature underneath that. But in essence, it's just wait. And so emotion is, it's the captain of the ship, the prefrontal cortex, that smart part, the IQ part, it manages it because the emotion says, when you don't like somebody, reach across and choke them, right? It says, do that. Yeah. And, and, and the, the management brain, the, the executive brain says, 
that's not such a good way to do that in your species. There's a different, use your words. Right. It gives intelligence to your emotions is what it does. Those emotions will run havoc if you don't do that, if you don't take care. Yeah. And I, and I think uh, what we were talking about too is when, is when you really do um, listen to people and try to understand and focus. Cause yeah, I agree with you about the multitasking, by the way, I've always, uh, I've always defined multitasking as doing a lot, a lot of things uh, badly simultaneously. Um, multi-failing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah multi, multi-failing. There you go. I, I'm going to steal that one. So you have to write that down. Multi-failing. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but what I'm saying is, uh, is that as humans, right, we feel extremely validated and important when we know we have someone's actual attention. Yeah. I mean, that's such yeah. an important, I mean, that really raises us. If I'm listening and I'm, and you're, and it doesn't matter, you know, you're selling to me as fine or whatever, but when I know that you're paying attention and you're listening to what I'm saying and you're really understanding and empathizing, or, I mean, that, that, that creates a trust connection. It, it, it does, because what it allows your, 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 the recipient of your attention to do is that they can suss you out, because, because all the trust is, and trust is, by the way, the, the end-all, be-all, it, it's the virtue, the trait, the aspect of us as humans that has been around since we were formed as the homo sapiens. It's the one mm-hmm. thing that allowed us to get out of the caves, because we're so helpless as a species, we can't run from our prey and we can't feed ourselves that we would die within seconds. The only way out of the caves was, was to have each other's back. And so that's what we did is we went as a unit and we created humanity. And, and in order to know that I could trust you, I had to watch you. And in order to watch you, you had to, to allow me the audience. And when you gave that to me and I was able to basically see how you would treat me afterwards, I would know whether or not in the moment of battle, I could count on you or I was a little bit worried about what you might do. And so that trust is, is embedded in that. There are so many different aspects of emotional intelligence, but if you can learn about trust and you can, I, I love it at the biological state, but I'm like, oh, look at what just happened to their trust. They just literally dropped it all out of their body. But the, the fact is that um, that's what you're giving to them when you're giving them attention. I can watch you and the human brain connect, you know, your eyes. It's the only way people actually can tell trust. I mean, we can listen to it. We can read it about it. But when you actually are eye to eye, the, you know, if you have children, you don't sit there. When you've done something bad, you, or you catch them in a lie. You don't say, you know, you, what do you say? You say, look me in the eyes. Look yeah. at me. Come on. Look. <laughs> right? You don't say, show me your bottom so, and now talk. You don't do that. Yeah, you know, yeah, we don't yeah, look at other parts of the body. Right? It's the eyes. The eyes have it. No, no, uh, absolutely. And I think then in... Um... In, in these days, you know, given the fact that, you know, there isn't a lot of face to face and all of that, I think uh, the other part of, of trust is really following through on what you say, like really say, doing what you say you will do, because that's the other big plank of trust building. Well, so there you go. And, you know, you could not have scripted this better because, because um, if, if you look at the build of things, um, we thought that, e, that IQ was the thing that would predict your workplace success. And we discovered it predicted your grades, how much money, the job you got, and how much money you would make initially, but not if you would move up in the organization. And then we found out about EI in in the 1980s. And when we found out about that, we added it up, we watched it longitudinally, and found out that in the workplace that it now accounted for about 48% of workplace success. So we're now at 54%, right? Then we asked what was next. Then we looked at grit, resilience, being able to bounce back when, when bad things happen, like right now, right? How do you bounce back? How do you reinvent yourself? Um, and we, we added about another 15%. So we're in 69%. The rest of it, the entire rest of 31% is the single most important attribute you can have. And it's worldwide. It's multicultural. And it is reliability. Will you do what you say you will, you, you will do and follow through? And it is, it is one of the initial aspects of trust. There's three things trust. There's an initial aspect to it. But in terms of what you just said, it is absolutely the captain of the ship somebody who is a laggard in many ways who follows through will always be the person who looks like they're doing things but is constantly sandbagging yeah no and i think that's a really i think that's a really important point and and especially now because everybody's antennas are are up and i also think that uh 
you know, there's a lot of, and especially in sales, there's a lot of pressure on the buyer side to make sure they make the right decision, uh, et cetera. And I always say, I mean, the thing about B2B sales is it can, or purchasing rather, it can be career enhancing if you get it right. It can be career limiting if you get it wrong, if you buy something yeah. that doesn't work out for your company. So there's a lot of emotion involved. So I think the more you have that, uh, as you said, the, that listening and validation, and then that follow through. So as you said earlier, like with the, with the homo sapiens that you feel that this person has your back. That's exactly right. And, and if you think about it, you know, you're, you're, you think about your buyers. I mean, it's, this is a really important thing. You think about your buyer who has somebody watching them. Yeah. And your, your lies or animations or your non follow through reflects on them in such a bad way that you know and it's it's that goes all the way to the top and and there is no top and the 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 bottom line is that everybody wants you to make them look better and to make mm -hmm. them feel bigger look better at the end of the day if, if all of you listeners out there at watchers listeners whatever however you're consuming this if you just remember one thing in the presence of other people if they feel bigger and better and smarter for having been in your presence you're probably doing something emotionally intelligent if you're diminishing them in any way, blaming them in any way, you're going down the wrong path. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a critical that's a critical point. Um, and I think uh, what we were just saying there, I think this is why a lot of a lot of sales uh, people or companies lose out to the no decision when they're selling something, because yeah. the as you say the, the the buyer or the buyers, if it's a committee or whatever, just don't have that extra level of trust uh, that that you're that you're going to be there for them or that you're going to deliver on what you said or that you have listened to them fully and i think that's why often people go oh you know they decided not to move forward with anything like how why would they do that uh, and you think they did that because that's the safe option because they're not trusting enough to move forward with you i think you hit on a key you could, this is your next book i feel it um the, <laughs> <laughs> i think the key point though is incredibly important and that is that you know what is that thing that causes them to place the x you know the x factor what is it that that causes them to go check mark and if you can figure that out it's a lot of what we're talking about but i think you're right i think what we bring people when you bring people to indecision that is not a compliment for you right it's just not a good thing um and and people if they spent time sales teams spent time figuring out how to get the okay boom they're the ones that, that's it, hands down. You can get that, uh, but it's, it's a lot more complex than it is to say, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, and, and you have to really differentiate, say, differentiate yourself uh, through, your, through, your, through how you sell and, and how you follow up and how you interact, because as we know, largely most products are commoditized or at least perceived to be commoditized you know, by buyers, whether that's true or true or not is, is up for debate. But it means that when you have a perception of commoditization, what is the differentiator? The differentiator is the experience they have, the buying experience. Absolutely, and it's just you. I mean, that's it. When, when you're in a, if you're selling something out there that is commoditized, um, you have to ask yourself, why is your company even placing the bet that and giving you money? You know, because they figure that you're just different and better enough than the competitor, competitor, not the product, because mm -hmm. you know, in all argument, most products that are commoditized are pretty much the same. You know, all things being equal, they're pretty much the same. And until they come up with a big, you know, Apple was able to to yeah. not commoditize because they came up with so much different stuff. But when they start to become the same, then it's going to be the experience. And they're trying to, of course, create that with with their um, their what do they call them, geniuses and what have you, and Home mm -hmm. Depot with their their geek squad and so on and so forth. They're making, they're not improving their product, they're improving the experience. And that's what your people can bank on. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's where you can really stand out that if you pay attention to emotional intelligence, if you pay attention to listening skills, uh, critical thinking, trust building, all of those things, and really putting yourself in the, in the shoes of, of the buyer. And I know that's a, a you know, that's people trot that out all the time, but really taking a step back for a moment and realizing that a lot rides on it from their side. I think that's where you can, you can really differentiate yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you wouldn't believe how many times, of course, people say that, but you 
would be astonished at how many people actually don't understand what that means. They don't really know how to place themselves in the shoes of other people. It's a real deficit in our country, and it's becoming a bigger one with yeah. the mask and with our children completely you know, focused in, in smartphones. They're not looking up. They're looking at this when the relationship yeah. should be this, right? Yeah, no, it is, and I and I and I think that's uh, and and I think here we have uh, we have problems. We definitely have problems today, and we have problems ahead until people people realize or or become maybe a little bit more self aware. And and unfortunately, self awareness. Well, we could do another whole hour on self awareness and uh, an hour <laughs> day week maybe. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, Scott, this has been fantastic, Scott Halford. Um, before we go, Scott, please do tell people about yourself. All of your information will be below this video, but please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Um, I'm the son of, no, I'm kidding. The, um, <laughs> uh, I, I work in the, the, the realm of leadership. I work in mostly large corporations, and I help people understand, uh, understand how to reach potential and effectiveness through understanding the brain. My book, Activate Your Brain. Um, details, basically, the things that we need to do to become a brain-based individual and brain-based cultures, because we have it exactly backwards right now. And COVID is actually, this whole pandemic is actually resetting that. And people mm -hmm. are now in brain-based environments driving them nuts because they don't know how to be in it, right? They'd rather be in, a, in an office looking busy, <laughs> right? As opposed to at home being two hours and being really, really very, very uh, focused and results-oriented. So that's, that's my business, scotthalford.com, is H-A-L-F-O-R-D, uh, is my website. And I, I love helping people's light bulbs go on when they go, oh, gosh, I really made a, a jerk out of myself just now, didn't I? And then they learn, and they move, and they grow. Cool stuff. Yeah, Hard yeah this is yeah. Yeah, this is that's fantastic. Listen, thank you so much, Scott. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeline of CRM. I will see you all again really soon. Thank you.